so uh, here is uh, some set of pictures which we, will, which we will make use of, but let us for a second uh, try to understand what is shown here. Again, here are two com complex planes of T. This is a complex plane of T, and this is a complex plane of T. So first of all, uh, two pictures correspond to two slightly different values of independent val variable z. And recall that on the previous slide, we realized that uh, on the complex plane of z now, if z is real and positive, only one settle point contributes to the integration path. And when z is real and negative, two settle points contribute to the, uh, to the asymptotics. And uh, of course, we understand that if we try to change argument of z continuously, at some point, one should change to two uh, as a discrete process. So it happens, of course, at some very precisely defined line. And our goal now is to uh, search for this line and to understand exactly what happens when we cross it. So and uh, the answer is uh, the following, that this change from one to two happens on the so-called Stokes line. Here it is. And in fact, there are three Stokes lines for the area function, one, two, and three. And each of this line, potentially, uh, the uh, number of contributing settle points can change. Let us, let us think uh, how it looks like in practice. So to be more specific, uh, the, this picture corresp corresponds to z slightly uh, before the Stokes line is reached. And uh, this curve corresponds to uh, z slightly after the Stokes line is reached. So here the argument is slightly less than 2, two pi over 3. And uh, here the argument of z is slightly larger than 2 pi over, over 3. Uh, so let us now again recall what is shown here. So on this complex plane of t, uh, the regions where the uh, integral is convergent are dashed. And they are, of course, identical at both of these pictures, as the contour itself does not depend on z. But now uh, this set of green lines and green dots correspond to a stationary, stationary points and uh, uh, constant phase trajectories. So first of all, for stationary points, these are these uh, fat uh, green dots. And you see that uh, uh, if you compare these two pictures, uh, the position of these, do these dots itself uh, do almost doesn't change. And this is natural, as uh, these points, t equals plus or minus square root of z, changes smoothly as you vary z. And when you go from this point to this, the location of these stationary points themselves changes only slightly. So, but uh, if you inspect these uh, figures more closely, you see that the configuration of these green lines changed a lot. And uh, in particular, let's try to understand how we are going to deform our original integration contour, which goes like that, remember, both here and here. Uh, how do we decompose it into a set of stationary paths? And uh, let us start from this situation. Remember that this, this situation corresponds to to argument which is slightly less than 2 pi over 3. Then uh, let us consider uh, what are our options. So uh, the most naive option is to do something like this, to start from this uh, green line somewhere here, go across this green line smoothly, like this, and then go to infinity. And of course, this trajectory is uh, very reasonable. Why? Because it starts and ends at uh, the region, regions where the integral converges, and it passes uh, exactly through the stationary point. So, so far so good. It seems that this is consistent with our understanding. At this, indeed, in this region, only one settle point contributes, but let us try uh, to understand the reason. So in particular, let us try to see what happens if we try to catch both of the settle points I on a single uh, stationary phase curve. So what happens is, suppose we try to, to start from this uh, stationary phase line, go like this. So it means that start from this point and go to infinity in this direction. And uh, from the first side, er from the first size side, everything is OK. We st started and ended in uh, allowed regions and passed through the saddle point. But now uh, we need to continue our integration path. And our area function is defined uh, up to a contour which starts and ends in these regions. So suppose we uh, reached here and we start to move from this, uh, from this region in order to achieve our final, final destination. So, so far our path is like that. But if we try to leave uh, this uh, allowed region by a stationary phase uh, line, 
it's, we see that this is possible only if we uh, leave the allowed region and uh, as such end up our integration in the region which is forbidden. And of course, uh, this is not something which, which we can afford. Uh, so it, and it means that uh, this, uh, uh, the only uh, control which is allowed for this situation is like this. OK. Uh, so and we, we, with this logic, we understand that uh, when, uh, with this configuration of the stationary path, the only uh, option is to catch uh, one uh, saddle point, and in particular, this one. So let us now turn to the second picture, which corresponds to an uh, argument which is slightly larger than 2 pi over 3. And again, we need to start from, from this region. And let, let us see what are our options. So suppose we started like that, then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, be smooth and reach, uh, ac uh, moving across the stationary phase line, reach another infinity. And the, uh, the most important difference compared with this case is that now we can, starting from this region, go across the stationary phase line and reach to our final destination. And this path it satisfies all what we want. In fact, first of all, it ends, uh, starts and, and ends into in the proper regions, and it uh, goes always along the constant phase lines, and uh, it catches both of the saddle points. So you see the drastic change. Uh, uh, only after a slight change of the argument of z, we have switched our integration path from this one to this one. And the, the most important difference is that uh, for smaller arguments, it catches only one of the, one of the saddle points. Here, it's already uh, uh, smoothly goes through both of them. And as a result, here, two saddle points contribute. And of course, uh, this uh, remains true in, in, in for some range of the arguments. And it happens that you can perform the very, very similar analysis for, say, for these two points, and find uh, for yourself that uh, indeed, uh, what happens in this line is very, very similar. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, the last line is, is this one. And you may find that the topology of this path uh, potentially changes uh, at each of this line by the, the very same mechanism. What you need to take from this is that uh, in usual life, when you calculate the asymptotic by the saddle point technique, you are interested only in the immediate vicinity of the saddle points. But you uh, uh, have always deal with the question, which of the saddle points do contribute and which do not. The answer to this, to this question de de is uh, determined by the, the full picture in its full glory. And uh, you see that the answer can be sometimes non-trivial because say, you see here that a very tiny change of z changes to, uh, leads to drastic changes. But uh, afterwards, after you understood which of the saddle points uh, do contribute and do not, you may restrict yourself like say here, only by immediate vicinity of the contributing saddle point, which is only one. And here you need to restrict yourself uh, only to contribution of the immediate vicinity of the saddle point, which is just in come in pair here. But uh, from this 
so to say, topology, topological analysis, you can always uh, safely and firmly conclude which of the subtle points do contribute and which do not.